welcome back to Beyond the Gate, our Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood podcast. I am Megan. And I'm Meg. And today we're talking about episode 21, Advance of the Fool. Yes, in this episode, um, hoping to learn more about the homunculi, Ed and Al devise a risky strategy to lure, to lure the creatures out of hiding. Step one of the brothers' plan, risk death at the hands of their most dangerous enemy, Scar. And this covers uh, parts of Maga Chapter 40, Philosopher from the West, 42, The Father Standing Before a Grave, and 44, The Unnamed Grave. Yep. This was, honestly, this was an episode that I forgot about until we watched it. And yeah, it's very entertaining. So It was I'm one of the excited. funniest episodes to date. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm excited to, excited to talk about it. Um, and we can just jump right in. So it starts out with, uh, we finally get to see what happened to Mustang and his crew. Um, after the, the fight with Lust, uh, they're in the hospital and Mustang is repr- reprimanding Riza for, for giving up. And he's very passionate. He's like, don't you ever give up on living? Um, no matter what. It's very sweet because yeah. you can tell. He really cares about her. We see that uh, Havoc is also in the room um, recovering. And Mustang is complaining that he should get his own room because of his rank. And he wants his own hot nurse. And- yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's funny in the manga because Mustang and Havoc have a, a little argument with each other. So apparently Mustang cauterized Havoc's wounds as well. After after they got attacked by Lust. And Havoc is giving him a hard time about how girls won't like him with burn scars on his body. And Roy calls him an ungrateful snot. <laughs> I would disagree with him. Girls like burn scars. <laughs> Shoto and Zuko are prime examples. Okay. <laughs> yes, but as, as we kind of mentioned already, like, those are fake. <laughs> I mean, like... They're not real burn yeah. scars. Um, no. Uh, but, Zuko's is pretty close. It's got like the, the it, rippled skin yeah, over his yeah. eye. But so it Shoto's is, is a water burn. It is definitely so, yeah. different seeing seeing like actual burn scars in, yeah, in person. Yeah. But um, honestly, honestly, he said like they were on his back and his stomach or something. And it, mm-hmm. yeah, it's yeah. You know fine. what? It's just a mark of battle. It's your mm-hmm. your badge of honor i guess uh, i think that's what people call it sometimes but if if the girl is worth marrying havoc she will love you no matter what even if you do have burn scars yes okay wait actually speaking of scars um i have a scar <laughs> on my face and i think i remember what it was from <laughs> um i was a genius when i was a little kid and <laughs> I thought it would be fun to run down a hill backwards, mm. and yeah, it didn't it didn't go so well. I <laughs> scraped up. I think I think that's what it's from. I scraped up my head and my shoulder, and also at my knee, like the whole. Ouch! Basically, like the whole side of my right side of my body. So, how's this for genius? I've got a scar on my ankle from a butter knife. I have a scar on my arm from a pan of cookies. <laughs> I did burn myself on one of those, too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Moral of the story, you can get a scar from anything. Yeah, all my all my scars are, like, from the dumbest thing. Dumbest things. I also have one right underneath my lip because I was... Okay, I, me and Hills are not friends, I guess, because... I was running running up a hill this time, um, <laughs> but it was winter and it was slick ice and Ooh. I fell and my tooth went through my lip. Oh, ow. Yeah. Yep. So Ooh. I got a nice scar from that. Scars None of them stories. are like, yeah, yeah. None of them are that obvious, but I have some fun ones. Okay. Anyway, back, back to the episode. Anyway, the reason why they're sharing a room is because they're worried that whoever was after them is going to come back and finish the job and it's easier 
to guard both of them if they're in the same room. Um, and then they're kind of like, what, why has no one come yet to, to kill us? Um, and then we see the homunculi, Envy and um, the Fuhrer are talking and Envy is very angry. He He wants to kill wants to kill mustang and his crew because they got really close to the entrance to um to their layer i guess um but bradley or the furious says no he's he thinks that that um mustang can still be useful to them and um father the Fuhrer said that the father has given him permission to deal with mustang as he saw fit and there's like more to the scene in the manga like mm-hmm. we actually get to see father yeah we actually see father and he gets out of his chair it's like this darth vader contraption yeah. he's got tubes hooked up to him yeah well i kind of i was thinking of thanos when when i saw oh, that like okay. the, he he rises <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually do anything though but no <laughs> um, the villains the villains that have henchmen that they they build up over seasons and episodes they usually don't do anything you Mm -hmm. know at the beginning of the story they're just imposing they're just there honestly like loki that would be me as a villain like i would just like (laughs) build an yeah i mean i just build an army and then be like you guys do everything but we always learn that like the minions are always are often dumb and don't carry out the plan as you want them to so well, I got to give no. this show credit, though, because Lust they're actually... was no easy person to beat. Mm-hmm. So they're they're, yeah. they're competent, they're smart, and, I mean, they have these awesome powers, which they can rely on too much. Like, they can bank on the fact they'll regenerate too much, I think. Mm-hmm. But other than that, they're crafty, and they, I don't know, they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, after the Fuhrer mentions father, we get a quick cut to Hohenheim before the, before the intro. Um, hmm. <laughs> yes. Suspicious. Um, and then we see Ed and Al, they're, they're discussing, um, Al's, Al's body, um, and how it might be retrievable. And Al is very worried <laughs> that his body is rotting. And then it's so funny. We like we we see him like imagining it. Um, it's all pixelated it out because yeah, <laughs> yeah, he'd be rotting <laughs> like bury the chopper's body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say that. And they yep. distort um they distort Al's voice so it's like very deep, like um, brother Winry. <laughs> they're just they're just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. But Ed thinks that during the during the transmutation, their spirits somehow got um, tangled in the portal and that he is supporting Al's body. He's he's keeping his body fed and rested. Um, He's keeping him alive. Um, And then we have the first of many um, humorous scenes in this episode. he starts to say that he thinks that could be the reason why he's so short, short, short. Yeah, su- super, super long. Honestly, okay, both the first time and this time when you were watching it, there is such a long pause that I thought it had glitched out. <laughs> and that Raise your hand, me. people in the audience, if you <laughs> had to pause Crunchyroll to see if it was buffering. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Winry and Al are like, he's starting to face reality. Um, but then Winry, of course, hits him with that, the fact that he's not growing is because he doesn't drink his milk. And then they like erupt into an argument. And Al is remembering, thinking about back to to all the times that Ed seems to like always be sleeping and, and resting. Um, and he thinks that maybe that's because he's sleeping for... For um Al, for for himself, and he's like, yeah. I hope that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so in the manga, the conversation lasts a little bit longer, and Ed and Al um they're going into the nitty gritties of their plan, and they briefly discuss how to get back to the portal to retrieve Al's body because that's where it would be. And Ed almost suggests sacrificing another one of his limbs, 
but Al immediately shuts him down. And Al says something like, you're thinking, what's another limb, right? (laughs) It's just like, oh, well, I mean. (laughs) That's such a good big brother. Yeah. And then Ed and Al, they go to visit Mustang and Havoc in, in the hospital, which... In the manga, just Al goes. Al goes to yeah. visit them before Ed gets back. Um, which, in like the timeline of things in the manga, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, Fur- Fury is with them. Um, he's bringing a map, and they are trying to figure out, or Riza figured out where the the portal that they found, or that big door that they found in that. Um, in that room where they killed Lust, um, where that might be, um, and which I was very impressed because I don't remember if she said this in the anime, but in the manga she was like counting, she's like counting her steps and yep, she paced and it out based on yeah, based on the length of her strides, and so she had drawn drawn a circle of where it could possibly be, and they note that. The presidential estate is in that is in that circle, um, and they're like, "Is the is if you're in cahoots with this group?" But then they're like, "Doesn't make any sense because why did they kill Greed without interrogating him?" Uh, but th- that's all they say about that. But in the manga, which this makes more sense, and I was thinking this while I was watching this. They say like, oh, maybe they killed killed him because he was uh ro- had gone rogue. Um, which he but had. They don't mention- yeah, yeah, which exactly he had. And they did and they don't know this, but he did capture Greed and uh I don't think he was necessarily interrogating him, but you know well, he just let father decide his fate. Yeah, yeah. And Mustang says they need to have extreme caution because they don't know who they can trust and he tells ed to to watch yourself um which is reminded me a lot of what armstrong said to mustang um in an earlier episode yeah uh and it's kind of funny because both ed and mustang like they kind of they like both have made similar faces in when somebody told them that they're more alike than they Yeah, they're more alike. yeah, they're more alike than they than they realize because uh, in the manga Al, Al and um, Fury, Fury are talking about that they're like both um both uh, Mustang and brother would would do anything to protect the ones that they love or the ones that they care about. And so even though they hate each other, they they're secretly very much alike. Um and then we have we have a very sad moment at the end of the scene because um, Havoc, he says, well, you're going to have to count me out of any plans that you have because I can't feel my legs. That that hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so sad. Um, and like, uh, I just like imagine like he, he knew that like for probably a while and he just like wasn't saying anything. It, he had to wait. Yeah. He, and then uh, the Mustang is hanging out, and I don't know, it must be like a hospital, like waiting room or something. And we see that coroner again, and very quick scene. But Mustang is basically he burns corpses, and the coroner takes care of them. And it was basically hinted that like he was the one that identified Maria Ross, um, mm-hmm. the burnt corpse, and apparently Mustang didn't actually communicate with him before but he just kind of was like went along with mustang's plan and i and identified the corpse um and then he just warns mustang to watch himself seems to be a lot of that going around (laughs) don't know who you can trust uh then we go back to havoc um and he's just Oh, it's just so sad. He's because he's like, oh, I, 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 well, sad and also kind of funny. He's like, I always thought I would retire because of a woman, um, <laughs> but wasn't that wasn't the way that he he wanted to to be done. Um, and he said that he's he said that he's gonna gonna answer phones at his family's grocery store. Yeah, um, he's retiring uh, from the military yep. he's, at a young age. Yeah, he's imagine he, he's that he's probably like younger a, than Roy. 
Yeah, I, I would say younger, but maybe about the same age. Because I'd like I'm at like 27 ish. Because you, I don't know. They always note that like Mustang rose to the ranks really fast, so they could be the same, the same age. Or yeah, but he I wasn't an Ishval, so mm, that's I thought, true. I thought maybe he's just a couple years younger. He just missed the cutoff for like the age requirements for mm-hmm. going over there. Maybe just a theory. Yeah, and Breda's in there, and he's like, "Why don't you get automail?" And um. He can't because his nerves are have been severed, so you There's can't no, get automail. Right, yeah, because you couldn't move the automail since it connects to your nerves. If mm-hmm. He doesn't have the nerves; he can't get the automail. Yep. And Braid also says that retired life doesn't suit him, um, and he shouldn't he shouldn't retire. Which I I don't know. I always found like this whole every like everybody on, on Mustang's team is like you shouldn't retire, Havoc. Like don't do this, but like. I was what kind of with Havoc a little bit. Like, have? yeah, I was like, he can't walk. Like, like I wonder if they could have him no, like, somewhere I'm like sure, in the books or Yeah, or I'm something. sure that they could definitely have him do something like that. But like, I think it would just want, be tough. Why for would him? you want to? Like, that, yeah, yeah. that'd be too hard. He'd be like, so close that. to everything and yet so yeah. far. Yeah. It, uh, he probably is thinking it's best just to remove himself entirely. Mm hmm. And then we find out that. Ed gave Breda um Dr. Marco's name because we know we know um Dr. Marco has a philosopher's stone and he's using it to heal people and Mustang gives Breda permission to to go find him um which this I don't know actually makes more sense than in the manga like Breda just like brings up Dr. Marco and that he has a philosopher's stone and and I'm like, how did he get that information? Although he probably got it, I would guess that Armstrong was keeping Mustang informed mm. of what was and happening. Breda, Breda seems like a guy who just knows everything. Yeah. Like he's yeah. attentive. But in this one, I like Ed, you know. Ed told him. That's so yeah. sweet. I, yeah. Like yeah. even, I think the the line of thinking here is Ed and Al won't use a philosopher's stone right now because it's like it's against their morals and they want to find another way if they're going to do this they're going to do it the right way but mm. if there's a way to help somebody else why would they withhold that information yeah so it seems to be kind of flawed thinking i suppose but it comes from just a place of <sighs> kindness and i mm-hmm. i love how they're like hey here's a chance for somebody and dr marco obviously wants to redeem himself by helping others so what better opportunity to help the both of them out Mm -hmm. yeah and also like I don't know how how do you how do you feel about this like they they have the philosopher's stone and even though it was made out of something terrible would you want to use it like for good like give it a purpose or just Destroy right, because it would just be sitting and, there doing nothing it, and people's even, sacrifices would be for yeah. nothing. Like can can it even be destroyed? I mean it can when it gets used, used up. up, but can it just So like, the way to destroy like it is to use be... it up. Come on, people, let's go. Yeah. Like I don't know. It that's kind of a it's kind of like um what's the saying like the ends justify the means. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think or like mm, sometimes you have to do the wrong the wrong thing to make things right, you know. And Al might also be thinking that um finding out more about the philosopher's stone and what it is, they might be cautious with using it just like we don't know the repercussions of using it. What <laughs> if we end up worse than that before? too? And like yeah, and like what they're trying to do is like way way beyond like healing Healing. yeah healing because like dr marco is already using like they already know it's possible to use to use the stone to heal like and what they're trying to do is yeah i don't know interesting anyway uh scar has returned armstrong we we see armstrong again um and he runs into to brosh uh Maria Ross's partner 
Um, and, and Brash asks him, like, how was uh, how was the East? And he and Armstrong gives his is Armstrong. He's like, the scenery was luminous and the women desirable. And Brosh gives him uh, a bulletin for a state alchemist, warning them that Scar is back. Uh, and then we see Ed. He has visited the the third the third lab, but the entrance was um, sealed by alchemy. The the entrance to the um, the basement. To the room. Yeah, yeah, the basement. Um, and then Brosh comes up to them and warns them warns them that Scar is back in Central. This is. Back in their hotel room, um, Ed tells Al that Scar was likely the one who killed Winry's parents, um, but they both decide not to tell her because they don't want to make her cry. Always going back to that. It's very, very sweet. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but there's and a time already, and place to already, tell like, her. Yeah, there is a time and place, but they've already. Where we wasn't there? Wasn't there a, past episode where they were like burned before by like not by holding on to not telling <laughs> yeah what uh i mean well okay mustang like not telling them that he was that dead. He died. like yeah. that, well I don't know. they might be thinking That's... there's nothing they can do to bring her parents back so yeah to save her yeah. from more pain they don't want to tell her how they died yeah i mean that would be hard she hear, deserves but... to know but but it's not necessary to right. tell yeah, her right. right at this moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then while they're discussing that, they decide that they they need to lure out the homunculi because the homunculi are the ones that seem to know about the portal. And they're going to do that by finding Scar because Ed and Al have both realized that for some reason they are, they are needed alive um, by the homunculi. So... If they find Scar, who's trying to kill them, then the homunculi, they reason that the homunculi will appear to uh, protect them. Um, And they can hopefully capture one of them or whatever. And then Ling and Lan Fan appear at the window. And and Al is like, why don't we lock the windows? (laughs) Um, And they want to help find the homunculi. And Ed's like, why do you why do you want to do that? Um, and one reason is because they want to learn about the immortality, obviously. But also they're like, well, we owe you too because of all the room so- service and <laughs> this like giant bill. Um, and Ed immediately kicks them out of the window. And then when we comes in, it's like, you guys need to be quiet. I'm leaving for Rush Valley in the morning. But Ed wants her to stay um, <laughs> because if his automobile gets destroyed, she will she will need uh need to to fix it and this is honestly this is like one of one of my favorite like funny scenes in the this is i think this is my favorite funny scene (laughs) winry like immediately conks him in the head with the wrench and then we just see ed his soul leaving his body and then al's like i've got your soul brother he shoves it back (laughs) into ed Oh, the first time we watched that, I busted a gut laugh. I didn't <laughs> expect that. And the way the line is delivered, like the, I got your soul, brother. Like this. Yeah. It was so cute. <laughs> uh. Um, But then we, we cut to Breda. Um, and he has gone to visit, um, Dr. Dr. Marco. And the place has been ransacked and Dr. Marco is gone. Yeah. So no, no hope for, for Havoc. And then we, we go back to, um, Havoc's hospital room and his mother has just visited him with an, um, like a, uh, somebody from the, um, uh, discharge office, I think. They yeah. Said. Yep. And he decided to retire. Um, and, Mustang kind of, well, Havoc, uh, understandably upset, and he's like, you don't, he tells Mustang, you don't need a pawn that can't move, um, don't, don't have time to, you don't have time to worry about me, think of, think of Hughes. Um, I just want to interject, the voice acting in this moment mm-hmm. was so good, he's like, screaming and holding back tears at the same time, telling Mustang to get on without him, and you can, mm-hmm. like, I almost want to go to the voice actor and say, 
are you okay? <laughs> because yeah. that sounded so pure. Yep. But Mustang, well, he agrees to leave him behind, but only if he if he can catch up. Mm. Um, and it's I don't know, it's so sweet. Um, and then Mustang leaves the room, and Havoc is like, he's the biggest idiot. He's such he's so soft and weak, and um, Riza is like, it's not in him to abandon others. Then Mustang sends Riza to get his uniform. He needs to get back to work, um, even though he is not healed. Literally, that's like another thing he and Ed have in common. Like Ed's like, all right, I'm fine. Like and leaves, and Mustang yeah. does the same thing. <laughs> and then another, <laughs> I again, I love, just, I love this. Um, this entire scene, and, yeah, it's so good. Um, Ed is like making a huge, big show of like fixing everything in central he's like running around like oh sir do you need help with that um and just like i'm edward help with I'm yeah he's your like announcing friendly neighborhood state alchemist. yes yes he's like announcing his name and the fact that he's a state alchemist he's trying to trying to get scar's attention um and it's super f- but i really love like al is like in the background of all these things he's like jumping and he's got like these two like fans they're, they're japanese fans yeah, they have the japanese I, flag on them yeah and i'm not exactly sure like what that's supposed to mean but I it's, think it's like celebratory i i'm not okay. sure of the cultural it's reference a, but it's kind of out of place in this fictitious yeah. european based world it's super funny yeah i don't know i just i just love like seeing him in the background he's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like pom-poms um, yeah and then yeah we got we got the spider-man spider-man reference so i, I love that um and then and then Mustang arrives and he's like get in get in the car right now um and he gets they get in and then like he's gets completely squished by Al and he's like on second thought let's get out um <laughs> and then Ed's Ed's plan is to is to fight Scar he tells him what his plan is um and uh Mustang's like you're dumb like remember you almost died last time and this again, like this this episode, like this is probably I, was I would cry say, laughing. I think this is like the funniest episode because <laughs> Ed's face, he's make he makes like I don't know. I, I always me and Megan both call it like his like crocodile face, um, and he's just like like oh you're so scared and he's like you're, you're useless mind. yeah you're useless. Um, but while he's in while he's in the middle of doing that, um, Scar has arrived and begins to attack Ed. Um, it's really, I don't know, it's really sweet because again, Al like immediately like builds a wall to protect Mustang and Riza, um, from Scar's attacks, which uh, is very just sweet. a protector. It's so cute, very sweet. And then, uh, we get. I really like this. There's like a joint attack by Ed and Al. They both like do alchemy at the same time. And Ed and Al are like, Mustang, help us. We we need to, you know, distract distract the MPs because they don't want the rest of the military. I mean, they don't know who they can trust. They don't want the rest of the military coming out and wrecking their plans. And Mustang agrees. And, And again, like, so amazing. Um, he like he goes they go to Fury's um like apartment and they use his radios to like send false reports of like oh scars in the you know eighth district now he's in the fifth district and it's it's so great Mustang <laughs> well, like, is just having a ball yeah okay. he's ha- yeah he even says like this is so fun like <laughs> um, Teresa does a little glance to the camera yeah she like she breaks the fourth wall a little bit and then uh the fear and gluttony arrive to join the fight um and ed ed is uh struggling against scar he's gets gets injured um and then it's super cool he like cancels out like scar's alchemy with his own and it was pure luck though he didn't know what yeah, kind yeah, he didn't... scar was using so he guessed uh-huh. and got it right yeah it was pretty awesome 
Um, and before Gluttony and the Fear can reach can reach the fight between Ed and Scar, they are confronted by Ling and Lan Fan, who we know agreed to help Ed and Al. And the episode ends with um, the Fear uh, cutting off Lan Fan's mask, and yeah. Ling is like Lan Fan. He kind of came um, out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, which we've seen he always does. Like you just. You never see him coming. And yeah, that's the end of the episode. It's Whoa. Yeah. It's it's kind of one that you you uh catches you off guard. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I wasn't like wasn't expecting it to be this show so catches fun. me off guard. <laughs> yeah, on, yeah, that's true. I mean, from episode two with all the screaming and bleeding and no giving my brother back, you'd think this would be like a serious dramatic show, which it can be at times. But then you get episodes like this where you're laughing so hard you don't really care about all of the drama. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, get on, let's get on to our extra stuff. Yeah, um, so we don't have any voice actor notes this round just in favor of other things we need to talk about. And also because we didn't really, there there weren't any prominent ones we wanted to, to list today. Mm-hmm. But we did want to talk about a theory for the show that we have um it has to do and the, with, and they already kind of talked about yeah it. they addressed so. it it has to do with ed saying that he and al had their spirits entangled so now when he's sleeping like he's sleeping extra to to give the rest to his body and al's body so it also means he is eating for two and mm-hmm. that is so weird to say because that's a phrase mostly reserved for pregnant women yes but if you remember in past episodes like, um, there's an episode where Ed is at the hotel. It's when, like, after they found out Hughes died. He's at the hotel eating this massive steak by himself. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. he's got a little body. And, I mean, he is a teenage boy, so he can he can really pack it in. But at the same time, that's a lot of food for just one person. So that got me thinking, like, yeah, I think he has been eating for two this entire time. Like, mm-hmm. the storytelling is so good. They set that up from the get-go yeah i i I love that because yeah just like you said like after you after they talk about it in this episode then you're like think back to all those times and you're like wait yeah that makes that makes so much sense it's also it's also kind of i can't wait does this happen in the manga where where ed's like fine i'll drink milk for you um, um uh, Al, that, Al does it is in the manga, happen? but Al okay. says you have to drink milk. And I think Ed does say something like, uh, maybe a sip or something like that. Yeah. Al yeah. is the one person who could convince him. If it's for uh, Al, he will do it. Yep. Yeah, he will he You will have to share it. that comic. That remember that cute comic where like Ed chugs down a whole thing of milk, even though it, it it's disgusting and it's like I'm doing it for you, brother, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I I I I have I I'll need to find that. I yeah, yeah. But there's also a funny. Um, I think Megan, you said that it was probably fan made. But there's like a funny scene where it's like, oh, maybe I am really eating for two. It, like Ed says that, and then he like puts his hand on his stomach, and then and Al goes, and Al's like, you just touched your stomach like you're pregnant, <laughs> and that's just like, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute. Yeah. Um anyway, moving on with our our list of things to talk about, we have a tracking uh thing to mention. So Ed destroyed his right glove while fighting Scar. So we can add that to the the tracking list of when gloves mm-hmm. were destroyed. Yes. And uh yeah, next thing is animation expertise. So <laughs> I wanted to to talk about the art style change for Ed's little good Samaritan act. There were thicker lines and choppier animation for him going around uh, fixing people's stuff. It's almost comic book-esque, which, um, you know, relates to the whole Spider-Man friendly neighborhood alchemist sort of shtick. Um, It's really cute and it's really funny. (laughs) And for story elements analysis, I wanted to talk about plot armor, which is something people reference a lot. It's um, usually... An author will have characters overcome challenges for the sake of keeping them in the story. So this is most noticeable when main characters survive injuries that should have killed them. And it can be kind of ridiculous and kind of annoying, but at the same time, 
we never want to lose our favorite characters, so we let it mm-hmm. slide. However, uh, in Full Metal, don't expect too much of that, because um, Havoc is taken out of action due to his paralysis. This author doesn't mind sacrificing characters for a stronger, more believable storyline. Mm-hmm. You have been warned. Yes. I always I always appreciate authors who who do that. Um because I it always does kind of bother me when like everybody lives like Right. One, one I, I of don't my, want one them of, killing people willy nilly though. I don't no, I but, don't like those stupid deaths that are just for the yeah. dramatic moment. Yeah. That's that's no. <laughs> like um one that always kind of bothered me, which I'm happy that everybody that everybody lived, but um, one of our favorite book series, The Lunar Chronicles. Yeah. Like, <laughs> literally, everybody lives. Like, and it's like, there's Thorn like loses some... a finger. <laughs> okay, that's not the same. Okay, like, oh no, I lost one finger. Like, whatever, bro. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's um, a good point. That's a good point. It's just like, I don't know. It, it was almost like disappointing. Like I totally expected to go into like the last book and it was like, okay, somebody's totally gonna die. Okay, sorry, just like if you haven't read it, you like just kind of spoiled it, but whatever. Some terrible um, things do happen. Yeah, to things some do other happen. And though. the thing is that there's like some really intense like fights and like things that are like, okay, bro, you totally like how is everybody alive? But also it does make sense because it'd be really sad to like there's like a bunch of couples in the story, so I'd be really sad yeah. if like one. Well, couple, they're they're you know, all really young Unless, too. Like yeah, the oldest but, person in their group is only 24, so I feel like the the author she probably just wanted to um keep the kids alive, but mm-hmm. she she did kill off like a couple like a lot of the parents. Um, there were characters who died; they just weren't the main ones or the or the best friend ones either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Actually, something that's I thought was interesting another i i read this book um uh what was it called um it was called the likeness and it's like a like a murder mystery um and the one of the characters who actually was one of the bad guys but he said like he said like oh young people die so easily like they're so they so easily not give up on life they don't have things to to live like they don't have things to live for like they don't have careers they don't have like families you know oh they oh. i mean like they i mean like they have families but like you know they don't necessarily not of their own other they don't have children like stuff like that um and i thought that was i don't know i thought that was kind of an interesting i get it but uh, like that, like that thinking I, can be flawed too though yeah yeah that's what i was gonna say like i i do get that like i think that's kind of true like i just think of like all like the completely idiotic things that like young people do you would never do when you're older and wiser or like i think a few years ago my you know my family comes and visits me for my birthday every year and like one year it snowed and like um they decide not to come and my mom was like oh uh, we like me and my one aunt like we still would we still would have come but we have this other my other aunt she is a single mom she mm. has two kids and like she wouldn't do that like yeah you like she's all her kids have so it's having someone depend on you definitely adds yeah more um I think that's I think that's kind of like more of the point that like this guy was making um but I thought that was thought that was interesting and like Mm -hmm. you do kind of think like and also just think of like war and stuff you recruit all the young people to to do it I mean and part of that's like um just physical strength physical strength but also like people can get um exemptions for you know being the only male Mm -hmm. in their the provider the the provider so there is something to like like you're 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 um maybe more expendable at certain points in life Mm. (laughs) like not you know what i'm saying like that not you know not actually but like kind of people view you differently yeah and you, you you view yourself differently too yeah 
anyway, the last the last thing that we just want to mention, I will definitely be sharing. There there are just like so many good memes from this episode. Um, so I'll be sharing them on our Instagram. So follow us if you want to check those out. And yeah, that's the that's the end of that's the end of the episode. Um for for this episode because it was so entertaining and funny and we didn't do any voice actor notes, we decided that we could each pick two favorite lines um because it was going to be too hard, too hard to just pick one. Um so Megan, what was uh what were your what was your first one? Let's maybe do you want to like go back and forth. Yep. Uh, my first one comes from Ed. I'm trying to explain that our bodies might be connected somehow, even though I'm here and your body's over there. See, that might actually explain why I'm so sh- sh- short. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to say your your first one? Yep. Mine came from Al, and it was, don't worry, I've got your soul, brother. <laughs> so cute. It is. I love how he just shoved it right back in. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, what, uh, what's your second one? My second one is from Roy when he is talking to the MPs over the phone. And I'm going to try my best to impersonate him with, like, he was holding his nose, too. Attention, this is Sector 3 Patrol. We're under attack from Scar. Request immediate backup. What? No! <laughs> All right, I'm through Sector 17, and this is pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh. him so much. <laughs> yep. So good. So and good. what was your other voice actor or voice um the vo- your line? <laughs> Mine was from Ed and <laughs> I don't know if I <laughs> it's when he's... No. <laughs> it's when it's when he was he was mocking um mocking Mustang for for being scared of Scar and he's like Ooh, sounds like the colonel scared a big bad scar. I'm not surprised considering how useless you were against him. <laughs> it's, uh, it says more, but it was it it was so weird. It's like one yeah, of those weird so anime weird. expression moments. Yep. But yeah. it's so funny and his like <laughs> his tongue does like this weird lizard thing yep. while he's talking. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, Mustang's reaction. Like he's so easy. Like they just they just drive each other crazy and it's awesome. It is it is kind of true that like when there's somebody that's like super similar to you, like you just like they just you drive get, you nuts. Yeah, you can get ticked <laughs> off easy because they have all of the the quirks that you have and mm-hmm. it's some of the things that you love about yourself and some of the things you'd rather not have in yourself. So you can get really mm-hmm. nitpicky with them. But it's I don't know. It's also great because Ed is kind of treating Roy like a big brother in that moment. He's like yep. playing little brother, getting on ner- his nerves. It's, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. All right. What was the uh? What was the moral of the episode? Uh, this one came from Roy. Thanks, Roy. When he said, "Don't ever give up on life." Mm-hmm. It's very. That was very powerful. The delivery of that. Yep. Um, and, and we just read a book. That was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was the theme of the book. Midnight oh, Library. Good. Yep. I would recommend that. It is very good. Um, I would say um, definitely for a more mature audience yeah, at times, yeah. but very uh, impactful. I, I enjoyed reading that one. All right. Who pushed the story forward in this episode? Ed and Al. They devised a plan to catch Scar and got their friends involved in the scheme. Yes. and. That's on the end of the episode. I am so excited for like the next couple episodes. This whole coming arc. Yeah. Is chef's kiss. Honestly, like I feel like we're kind of after like kind of this point, everything is just ramping up. It's yeah, it's all this, it's all good. Yeah, from um, from this episode until maybe five or six episodes later, I'd say this is like the midpoint, like the solid Mm -hmm. midpoint where every single episode I am fully invested in. And then every episode beyond that for the end part of it is just like, you can't stop. You just can't stop. Yep. We like, well, what was it like the last 11, 10 episodes episodes ish? Oh yeah. We like binge and like, it was like five days. It was, it was, 
It was less than that, I think. Yeah, that yeah, was, it was insane. <laughs> but I'm glad we did because a lot of them, it all, it's like a, a, a bunch of episodes. It spans a bunch of episodes, but the events all take place in one day. Mm-hmm. So you kind of, you kind of have to watch it like a movie. That just reminds me of like Hunter Hunter when it's like 30 mm-hmm. episodes in like 20 minutes. <laughs> so it's so, it's it, annoying. It was so, it was, it was an amazing arc, but it was also like it made me laugh so hard because it's like 20 seconds after what this thing that happened, um, it's like five episodes in and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Day 35 of watching Hunter Hunter. I've forgotten what Soul Knight looks like. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's the end. Follow Ooh. us on Instagram to see see the memes at uh, Full Metal Beyond the Gate. I forgot for a second. Um, and then also check out our YouTube channel, which is again Beyond the Gate. Beyond the Gate. And we will be back next week with another episode. Yeah, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.